In life, there are firsts. There's always a first time for everything. Hi, I'm Janet Trevino. I live in San Antonio, Texas, and I'm a touch therapist. And we're gonna discuss for time, first time touching a woman. Ah. <laughs> we don't often talk about first, the first time in, in doing things. Uh, you know, we, we wanna talk about the times when we did this thing and we were so confident and it turned out awesome and great and we looked good and all the things, but we always have a first time. And hopefully your first time in touching someone of your attraction was a good one, a pleasant one, something that felt really, that really matched you and, and met you where you're at. But many of us don't have that because our first are filled with other things like substance, substances or coercion of all those things. So today I'm going to discuss in, you know, in having a session with a, a pro, someone who works in touch and it being the first time you're touching a woman. <laughs> and in this case, me. <laughs> so this can happen at any age, right? I mean, I only work with those 18 and over, um, sometimes 21, depending on kind of what's, what's there present in, in with the client. And I've seen clients in their low 20s who have never touched a woman all the way up to 50s, I think. I'm trying to think how far high, high, high that person went. And in talking about this, uh, the last person I had a session with like this, I did ask for their permission to talk about this topic, especially that it was inspired with our session. But I have seen many clients like this. And there are many reasons why people wait to experience touching someone of their attraction. And that could be because um, they were busy with their education, they were taught, they have like a very religious background or this, you know, very kind of proper way of doing things and things didn't line up for them in terms of like relationships and then marriage and all of the, that kind of progression. It could be they were shy, they didn't know how to approach someone that they were interested in. Again, there's a long list and that might be you. And so this video is definitely for those of you out there who are like, I haven't had a chance to get close to someone I'm attracted to, in this case, a woman. And, and I want it to be comfortable for you to come and, and have a session as I can kind of explain how I do things or ask someone, you know, maybe it's not a professional, it's somebody you know that you could just say like, I've never had a chance to hold or touch a woman. Would you feel comfortable? And that's role playing. I know that might be very weird. <laughs> if you're already shy about dating, I'm sure that would be a very awkward conversation as well. But maybe send them this video. I don't know. Um, anything's possible. And it's also very normal, um, especially it's happening more as the younger generations are experiencing less touch and less sex, being that they're so much online and behind screens, that it's a culture that is doing less of the touching. So we may see more and more people who are in need of professionals to kind of step in and kind of get the, like the jitters out. Cause that's what happens. It's like suddenly you realize, oh my gosh, I haven't done this thing. And oh my goodness, every day that passes and every year that passes and it can get very overwhelming. Like now, how do I fix this as if it's broken or wrong? And it's not, it's just, it is what it is. And I want to tell you also, I have door, adore, adore, adore seeing clients that have never touched a woman before. It is, it is just like, it's like Christmas. It's like, so it's like a package. I get to like unpack and I see like what's inside. Um, who are they? <laughs> it's like one of my favorite things. And yes, this is, of course I will. Um, it is, to, I'm making this video on a Tuesday, toxic Tuesday. I'm, I, on Tuesdays, I just kind of look at myself and see what toxic thing. And I may need to admit that um, there is definitely a little bit of ego in it. Like, ooh, I get to be the first. <laughs> That's kind of fun. <laughs> a little toxic Tuesday trait of mine. Um, but yes, it is, it's enlivening. It's, um, it brings me alive in a way that I just feels really, really good. So uh, I want to also acknowledge that this can be a woman or a man, right? Like, that might want to touch a woman for the first time. And so in in the later, or the, most of this video, we'll be kind of seeing it from the perspective of a man touching a woman for the first time. But um, I have had experience of, a, of women who have never touched another woman. And that might should be more common. I mean, it could have a lot more, there might be a lot more pull for that for those women 
who might be bi-curious or you know unsure um, they've only been with men and are curious like what would it be like to touch another woman's body that's not their body so that could be for another video if that's of interest to you and you'd like to hear more about that let me know in the comments and i'd be happy to make a video about women touching women but in this case we're going to be discussing um, a man touching a woman for the first time so how in life could this have, you know how do people normally do this just real quick um some possibilities you know growing up you know your little neighbor or friend or whatever maybe on the school bus you know sitting next to a girl um holding someone's hand like in you know elementary school middle school and then you get into high school and college where like dating happens and people you know start to get closer and there's hugging and then you know that progresses into usually some kind of sexual activity and like that's is often what has historically been a way for people to experience it touch of the gender of their interest uh, and sometimes there's substance abuse or substances that are involved that make kind of lowers the inhibitions for people where touching might be more possibility or um, sometimes if you're a man a woman touches you first maybe an older woman so then these are kind of the very typical stories that I've often heard it doesn't always go well it's not always desirable or pleasurable but it is the way that kind of people break into touch and I'd like to offer something different there is another way. <laughs> and hopefully, if you get, if you know someone in your area, if you're not around me, they're professional cuddlers, um, I encourage you to seek them out or in intimacy workers who would do this for you. There are providers that can do this. And I'll just again kind of give you a little checklist of the things that I provide. So I did have a client one time who came in and who's like, it came from a very strict cultural and religious background and had never touched a woman. And now he's in his mid 20s. So in his case, um, because of the cultural element that was at play, we did an age regression. So this is number one. We went through and like started off with like infant touch and like one and two and three and every age. It just kind of played around with what it would be like to touch at all those ages. And so we got to like that part where it was stopped for him, where he stopped. He only had familial touch and wanted to engage with somebody of the opposite sex. So like that right there at 13, kind of like 12, 13 is where it like turned on where he was able to move through those ages and move into, again, we just stayed within the cuddling world, but he was able to experience um, that like fun teenage kind of exploratory kind of touch. And yeah, so that was age regression is one option. Another one is just cuddling. Great, cuddling. And this is gonna begin fun depending on what level you're at. So there's the progressive cuddling. I provide a program called Retouch where we go and build skills around the nervous system and how to like relax. Cause things get like, ah, your body kind of freaks out, right? With like touch for the first time and how to slowly move into a process of touch. Like, again, it could just be like hands touching at first and then we progress into a more like cuddly full body, two bodies up against each other kind of cuddling. So that's like retouch. And then the third option is cuddling, just a deep dive. So often I'll say, do you want to just deep dive into the you know, deep end of the pool and explore cuddling? No, <laughs> horizontal. Um, often I'll, we'll begin seated, you know, kind of like uh, people will climb back into me and we'll start seated and then move into kind of a horizontal position by the end of the session and be kind of in a full cuddle. So that is another way to kind of jump right in. And then lastly is for those who you know either have trauma or have a long history of just things that have compounded and made things really difficult and like in their heads and they can't get in their bodies and things are just really out of control a little bit and they just want to bring some grounding and a little more methodical process there is surrogate partner therapy which has that more thoughtful including a therapist weight into getting into to touch and getting into that experience and the cool thing about surrogate partner therapy is it can move into the full spectrum of a relationship, right? So you're looking at what would be possible in um, in the girlfriend or you know, in kind of like a romantic and sexual relationship. You can kind of explore all the possibilities of that potentially. Well, within reason and within what serves the client, right? Always is in service of what the client needs in conjunction with a therapist and with myself or your other surrogate partner, whoever you choose. So I've done all of these uh, clients and 
and they're all getting very exciting. It's again, like I said, it's like Christmas where you get to like, ooh, what's gonna come up and what's gonna be present and and of course I love teaching. I love like, let me show you, can may I take your hand? And like, hmm, put your hand on my face and move it slowly and, and kind of show what that feels like. So there is no shame in coming late to the touch game. I'm gonna say that again. There's no shame in coming in late to this, to touch. It's okay. You're okay. And there's no shame in wanting to explore it for yourself in curiosity. I, I think there's the value of coming to a professional for your first experiences is that it is all about you. So what I'd like, um, and I want to get away from the word shame suddenly, um, there is a lot of joy and ability to experience acceptance, self-acceptance and self-love in experiencing it with a professional at first. So here's why it might be beneficial for you. So if you engage with someone you just met, like in a romantic pursuit or someone who's not a professional, there's a lot of moving parts a ton. Like they have their needs and then your needs and everyone's coming at this like, you know, how do we get our needs met? And I don't know how to ask for what I want. And I don't know, I can't read their mind. And again, lots of parts that are moving and lots of possibilities of dissatisfaction because you're both kind of like maybe new at each other. First, yes, you're absolutely new at each other. One of you, we know that you are the one that's new at touch it, you know, to begin with. And the other person, who knows how much experience they've had. I, I don't know. Um, and it's a little, can be a little clunky and just feel ungrounded, right? It can be. You know, if that person comes with really compassionate, loving, and like, understanding an open heart well fantastic like they probably are a pro and you probably need to tell them to come my direction and <laughs> and move them into be able to do this um as a, as a as a job right so always looking for great people to do this work so having all those moving parts though again it can make it complicated and for you to kind of discover what you're interested in what you like and and i do think it's important to consider yourself first um because seeing a pro means that it's all about you. It's focused on you. And and we are here in service of you, your experience. And I think that's the best part. I, I will say that with this last client, I felt like I was kind of in an educational role. Like I was teaching, and I'm like, ooh, let me tell you about all these things about, about not only me, like particularly, because we're having an experience together and he's experiencing me, but also like women and like possibilities and how, you know, just the different types of touch and noticing, giving him feedback. Like I noticed that his touch was really particular and, you know, did he even know that that's how he touched, you know, that's, there's other ways to touch and that, you know, in case, let's say he's touching someone and they're like, in his way, he's doing his thing and the person's like, Ooh, I don't really like that. That doesn't feel comfortable for me. Um, he could be like, oh, well, I know other ways, right? Yay, win, bonus. <laughs> so we talked about them. Um, and so again, having me be able to teach and like, like, Oh, let me show you all the really cool things you can do with others. That felt really good for me. And, and then he has, again, possibilities he can, again, show someone else. So I'm giving choices and that feels really good. And so having the experience where it is all about you, gives you possibilities for in the future when you're looking at long-term relationships you have more in your tool belt toolbox right you could pull out things and you especially know what feels good to you because in a relationship that's number one. First, what do you like what kind of touch do you like what feels good to you you can share that with your partner because you've learned and then you can ask them questions and then do what feels good to them so um and then of course makes a better relationship having learned okay <laughs> i think that's about it um so yes it's i want to re repeat the most important part is it is absolutely okay for you to see a professional for your first touch experience it's absolutely okay um for it to have taken you a little bit of time that you're a late bloomer or you know decades long it took it's okay um it's never too late Please get the touch that works for you. Mwah. Have a wonderful rest of the day.